With rising house prices, you may be fooled into thinking that Australia's economy is going gangbusters, but recent news headlines tend to tell a different story. Two weeks until insolvency rule change could lead to economic disaster. Two weeks until Australia goes broke. China has formally banned Australian coal in a huge escalation of the trade war. Second AFL coach splits with wife. I know, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that made the front page of the news. Putting that aside, is Australia's economy in for a world of hurt? Here's a chart of Australian company bankruptcies over the last five years. Ordinarily, the level of bankruptcies is around this level, so let's say around 700 per month. Fast forward to 2020 and that level has been significantly reduced. In the worst pandemic that this world has apparently ever faced, from about April onwards, the rate of insolvencies in Australia went down by at least half, if not more. Of course, this is completely artificial. Struggling businesses have been propped up by government subsidies such as JobKeeper, which essentially pays the wages of their staff in order for people to keep their jobs. In other words, to mask the actual unemployment rate. Over 1 million businesses are still getting $1,200 a fortnight per employee to help pay their wages, but that steps down in January to $1,000 per fortnight and then stops completely at the end of March 2021. Of course, with any free government money, there will always be some folk who try to rort the system. Case in point, business executives. Enormous wastage. Audit looms for executive bonuses paid by firms on JobKeeper. Apparently, about two in five companies who received government subsidies went on to pay executive bonuses worth a total of $24 million. Apparently, they received nearly $1.8 billion in taxpayer subsidies, with JobKeeper accounting for more than half of this. As Macro Business so eloquently put it, JobKeeper, a stimulus for executive bonuses. Ah, nothing like pandemic rotting at the top end of town. Back to Australian company bankruptcies. For most of 2020, company directors have not been personally liable if their business continues to operate while insolvent. That saved a heck of a lot of companies. But from January 1st, 2021, the rules revert and company directors could again be legally responsible. To avoid breaking the law, their safest move may be to put their companies into administration. Consequently, with this rule change, as well as the pairing off of the JobKeeper payment, we'll probably see bankruptcy rates skyrocket in 2021. Fun times ahead. Of course, there's the ongoing unresolved trade tensions between China and Australia. Australia's Prime Minister isn't too happy. Scott Morrison lashes China over reported ban on Australian coal imports. Prime Minister says if the Chinese state media reports are correct, the ban would be a breach of WTO rules. Unfortunately, the Chinese leadership just don't care. China accuses Australia of playing the victim and politicising trade, says coal ban is a responsible act. China has defended its alleged ban on Australian coal as both legal and good for Chinese consumers and companies, accusing Australia of playing the victim as the fraught relationship continues to deteriorate. Up until now, the Australian government have done a pretty good job keeping the Australian continent afloat. High house prices? Brisbane house prices hit record high. A relatively low unemployment rate of 7%, considering the economic carnage that we've seen. But I think we all know that this has been kept artificially low thanks to JobKeeper, which is set to end in March. Struggling businesses staying afloat due to massive stimulus. International border closures push Australian businesses to the brink of collapse. Yes, many businesses have been kept buoyant despite the world economy tumbling down around us. But how long can all of this buoyancy last? Have we dodged the big crash? Or just delayed it?